right. What's going on, everybody? Um, stuck in traffic, so I was like, you know what? I, I wanted to shoot a video for a while now, and I just haven't had time. But um, I have time right now because I'm stuck in traffic. Uh, you know, one of the things that that uh, you know, I was talking to my to my significant other about and, and is uh, you know we we do plan on eventually moving out of California just because of the way the state is being operated and, and the way it uh, treats the people that live here um, and the biggest thing that we were talking about is like you know I, I don't want my daughter to go to school here and and, and number one the, the education is terrible and, and number two what they're teaching them I just I don't want her to I don't I don't want that to be forced onto her um, and what I mean by that is like uh, the area that I live in it has a dual immersion learning system where uh, majority of her class will be taught in Spanish, and um, I just I'm not okay with that. Like it, it's, you know, other than being in California, um, this should, Spanish isn't going to be that big of an issue, you know. But because we live in California, and we pander to everybody but the people that are citizens in this state. Uh, we're, we're forcing our children to learn a second language and I'm all for learning another language if you want to you know um, it shouldn't be forced like if you want to learn another language great learn another language but the, the fact that there is no option not to have that in the classroom uh, with my daughter I just it, it, it's ridiculous you know uh, and you know that that's fine um you know, if if that's how people want to do stuff here, but I mean, I've heard it from numerous parents and, and numerous people who are not happy with it. You know, and of course, you know they don't have the option to leave because of work or family or whatever. But uh, you know, my my family has long passed away, uh, and my 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 girl's family doesn't live here, so um, we we really don't have any reason to stay in California. Um, which a lot of people, the, the middle class is, is totally leaving uh, California because number one, it doesn't pay to be middle class in California. You pay the most on everything because if you're poor, you get free insurance, you get free everything. You know, I, I found out that there was um, uh, my, my friend's mom is a landlord and she owns property, I guess is the best way. And she owns apartments in the town that I live in. And I found out that the government subsidizes uh, migrant workers' rent. So what they do is, is they pay rent for migrant workers uh, half the year that they're here to subsidize for them to have for cost of living and stuff. And I'm just like, what? Like, <laughs> what? Like, we pay their like to, I mean, because it's taxpayer money. Like, we pay their rent for them to be here to work. And, and, and I just, I don't get it, man. I, I don't get how ass backwards we are. Like, we're paying people's rent to, to, to be here to work because of, you know, what is it, farm labor or or all these other, you know, these big companies who, who own, who own uh, the food industry in this area. Instead of making them pay, like, decent wages and have insurance for their employees, <laughs> we're, uh... We're covering everything for them through the taxes, right? Through taxes, tax billing and funding and all these special little programs that we get set up through the government. And all these big companies, ad companies don't pay shit. The majority of them don't pay shit. Because half, half the people that are here illegally, you know, they're on Medi-Cal. You know, they're, they're getting government subsidies. Which as middle class, if you're a citizen, you don't qualify, you know? You don't qualify for that shit. So California is backwards as fuck. Um, we don't take care of the people that are paying the bills and the taxes for everyone else. Because if you're super rich, you don't give a shit either way, right? You, 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 you see these celebrities and these rich people, they're just like, you know, they don't care. They're like, yeah, bring, you know, who cares who comes over here? You know, who cares about this? Because they're super rich. It doesn't affect them. You know, they're not, they're not going to have to deal with the issues that people who live in areas where like, all this stuff is happening, you know, you know, uh, 
they just, they just don't care because rich people are going to send their kids to private schools. Rich people, you know, have their own little gated private communities, you know, so it doesn't affect them, you know. Um, so that was that was one of the things I, wanted, I, I just wanted to get off my chest because I was just like, you know, because now, you know, my daughter's two, getting ready to be three. So, you know, we're going to be looking at preschools and stuff pretty soon, you know, and uh, I just I'm, I'm just severely this disappointed in, in in California like it's just it's so bad and I'm sure people are gonna be like well why wouldn't you want your daughter to learn another language it's not that I don't want my daughter to learn another language okay that's not that's not the point I want my daughter to choose what language she wants to learn because there's tons of them out there I don't want her to be forced to learn a language because it's better for the area that we live in like what what is that do like English is our language right I mean maybe I'm wrong you know, <laughs> but uh, it, you shouldn't ever tell me that because it's the area that we live in. Because we live in America, the United States of America. So, you should tell me because we live in California that she should learn Spanish. And that's just bullshit. You know, like if she wants to learn Italian or French, Greece, I mean, shit, even if she wants to learn Spanish down the road, cool. But I want it to be her choice. You know, I, I don't. I don't want it to be forced on her, and I definitely don't want it to be forced on me as a parent. Um, so yeah, that's that's one thing I wanted to get out. The other thing is like, oh my god, I still, I still, I'm a, I, I don't know if I've talked about it before. I probably have, but I am so sick of trucks on the road while I'm driving to work, dude. Like, I'm not talking about like pickup trucks and shit like that. I'm talking about like diesel trucks because they just cause so much traffic and, and I was thinking about it and I was thinking about it and I was thinking about it and I was like dude you know what like, we should eliminate trucks being able to drive on the road from 7 in the morning to 7 at night right I mean I think that would help the community process like so much like I'm, I'm in traffic right now and all I see and you're like yeah there's regular cars but I see so many diesel trucks and like they back up traffic because they move slower you know it's just I, I, when you're when you're on your way to work and you're stuck behind a diesel truck trying to go up a hill, good luck. That's that, that sucks. And I mean, I don't know how realistic it is, but at the same time, like I, I don't, I feel like they're limited anyways on how many hours they can drive a day. Anyways, right? Like I'm, I'm pretty sure that it has to be limited because I mean, you don't want somebody driving 24 hours a day. Uh, that's just not safe for anyone. So I'm pretty sure they're limited on how many hours they can drive. So if they're limited on hours they can drive. I mean, from from being able to drive from seven at night to seven in the morning, I think that's pretty good. You know, that's that's a twelve hour span of them being able to drive. Like, who should be driving more than twelve hours? Like you, you probably shouldn't, right? Um, and it's just, it's just so bad. Like, I mean, maybe maybe we could look more into like you know we have a trains, we have all these railroad tracks that I don't see us being used hardly at all anymore. I mean, you can always use trains for shipping, which I'm sure some people still do. But there's got to be better options than, than than just clogging the roads with diesels every freaking day, man. Um, anyways, that that's kind of another thing I was thinking about. Oh, so I was telling my oh excuse me, I was telling my girl I was like, if I ever get elected governor, I'll pass that law, <laughs> but. I don't know how realistic it is, and I'm sure, like, if I did try to pass a law like that, every person who owns a business that uses diesels for shipping would probably be, like, trying to put a hit out on, on me or something. <laughs> um, but, yeah, it's just just something I was thinking about, because I was just like, I'm sure we've all been there, where we've been stuck behind a diesel, we're just like, come on, man, you know, or, you know, it, it's just because they just drive super slow, you know, and, and you know. There's just a lot of reasons, but anyways, um, yeah. And let's see, the other thing, I mean, I guess I could talk a little bit about some sports. Um, you know, you got the NBA Finals starting tonight, Toronto versus um, the Warriors. Uh, I'm expecting the Warriors to win like most people. Um, the East is, is just... Uh, it's just not very good still, you know, like, uh, there's some talented teams in there and stuff, but, um, I mean, LeBron left the East to come to the Lakers, gross, you know, I just, 
can't even watch Laker games anymore because I can't stand that dude. And I'm so happy. Like, I'm a Laker fan, and I'm stoked that they didn't make the playoffs because I didn't want to see LeBron James get any credit for anything on, in the Laker jersey. Um, but anyways, like uh, I was, I, you know, everybody picked Milwaukee to win the East, and you know, it, it just there's only one team that I that I thought was I thought Toronto was probably going to make it to the to the finals, you know. Um, I thought Boston might have had a good chance, but they, you know, they lost to Milwaukee pretty handily, I believe. Um, but uh, Toronto was my, my pick, it's my, my second, just because Kawhi Leonard's been there, you know, he, he's he's got that experience, um, you know, and Toronto has never been that far off from being able to do something in the East to begin with. But everybody was like, oh, you know, they got me up. Uh, did they get rid of DeRozan? I think that's I think that's what they got um, rid of for for fucking um, Kawhi Leonard. Uh, and they're like, oh, Kawhi's a difference. He's the reason why. Well, he, as much as I don't really like the guy, the the biggest difference why Toronto was able to get where Toronto got is LeBron James is no longer in the East, right? Because you know the 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 Cavaliers built a team. That is decent enough to get to the finals with LeBron James. You know, they, they, they built a supporting cast around LeBron James that fit his offense and his style. So, I mean, that's a big reason why uh, Toronto was able to make it to the finals. And, you know, you, you, I can say whatever. Like, I, I don't like LeBron James. And it's not because I don't think he's talented. It's because I don't like his antics and his political views and his, you know, the way he flops and stuff like that. Like, to me, I just, that's not me, but, like, that's the NBA right you know he's he's a great talent can't say anything about that you know but that's the main reason why Toronto's in the finals and nobody nobody seems to be talking about that they just talk about like oh how you know the GM in 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 Toronto took a risk and it paid off with huge rewards by getting Kawhi Leonard it's like okay you you, you took a risk but I, I I have a feeling that if DeRozan was still there okay and they didn't take that risk because LeBron's not in the East anymore, I think Toronto would have been okay. I really do, and and not just because like you know, uh, DeRozan and Lowry and all them. I mean, because they they typically are pretty bad in the playoffs. Those two guys, and they're like Lowry's doing better with Kawhi, but you know what? It's experience, man. It's that experience that they got, and also not having to, because for whatever reason, LeBron James owns the Raptors. For whatever reason, he really does. Like they, when they when they see LeBron James, um, who they're versing, like they, all of a sudden it's like they're a pickup team, playing some professional team. Oh, excuse me, I'm just yawning like crazy. But we'll see. I, I, you know, everybody's like, "Oh, the Warriors are better without Durant." No, they're not. No, they're not. Okay, uh, it's a different without Durant. You know, there, there's more ball movement and everything goes to Curry, but they're not better without Durant. Let's let's be real. Uh, that's the most ridiculous crap I've ever heard. Um, but, you know, uh, you're talking about the best player in the world uh, and the two-time NBA MVP, right, for the for, for, for finals. And he might, be, he might be the MVP for the NBA a couple times, too. So I don't really know. But, uh, Durant's a really good player. Uh, and he's not a selfish player. It's just like he's the focal when he's on the floor. And of course he's going to be the focal when he's on the floor. He's really good. Um, but I don't see... Kevin Durant doesn't care about anything but winning. And that's that's what you want, right? He doesn't care if he's the main guy or not. Like, he just wants to win. And that, that's what you want to see from, from somebody on the floor. But we'll see. I, I don't think I don't think that this is going to be that close of a series. I know the first two games are in Toronto. Uh, if Toronto doesn't win both, they have zero chance. Uh, if they... If the Warriors win both those games, or even just one of those games, it's it's not going to be close, dude. Toronto has to win at home, you know, because they're, they're not going to win in Oakland. They have to win at home, so they can't really afford to lose. So, yeah. Anyways, that's my take on that. And then, of course, you know, we'll talk some Raider football because that's what I like to do. I like to talk Raider football. Um, I like I talk football in general, but. The Raiders signed Richie Incognito, who um, has been a 
focal in the media and, and other things for many different reasons from racial slurs to uh, questions on his sanity and most recently he got in trouble for ripping out a alarm system and punching a hole in the wall at his grandmother's house in Arizona he got in trouble for that and the Raiders just signed him to a one year deal to play guard or to compete for guard on their offensive line and you know he's, he's not a bad offensive lineman like that's not at all what my point is but now with Perfect and Brown and Incognito boy we, we probably have a psychologist's dream uh, of players to, to, to evaluate and analyze because uh, you, you want to know what goes on the head on half these guys like what goes on through their head like you just you don't know and I don't know if it's pressure that, that Gruden's feeling to win uh, in Oakland it was last year in Oakland you know we're getting ready to move to Vegas but you know you, we have to build the team the right way and you know I don't think that they're not trying to build it the right way that's not what I'm saying but like sometimes some of these signings and these moves just seem uh, a little too desperate for me and, um, and I, I don't necessarily agree with everything that they do in the draft and that that's not my job like I'm not you know if it was up to me we would have drafted different people you know uh, I'm not sure who we drafted with our first pick is, is uh, was the best. I mean, yeah, he's supposed to be great, hard, hard work ethic and everything like that, and, and uh, good morals and compass and all that stuff. But I don't think that he was the worth the number four pick. Like, I, I just there's a lot of guys out there that I still think were better than him. Like, I'm not trying to I'm not trying to knock him. I mean, who knows? He might turn out to be really great, but there. It, I know that the Raiders could have got him later on if they would, if they would have moved back. Like he was going to be there. Like if he was their guy, regardless, they should have moved back and and traded back to get him. Because the problem with him is he can't. He comes from Cleveland, or not Cleveland. I'm sorry, um, Clemson, and he was on a stacked defensive line. Right. Every I think every player that was on that defensive line with him got drafted in the first round. Like every player. So there's I think there's like four of them. And they all got drafted in the first round. So, I mean, that's not going to happen in Oakland. You know, uh, we, we are lacking pressure on the quarterback. We are lacking stopping the run. You know, there's, there's a lot of areas on the defensive line that we need some work on. But we'll see. Um, but by far, my the one that I disagree with the most is uh, taking a running back with our second pick in the first round. Because it's just running back. Okay, if, if you draft a running back these days in the first round, that running back has got to be an immediate starter impact player, right? Because otherwise, a running back is a dime a dozen. Dude. You can you can field a good running back committee, you know, by, by by just that doing it by committee. You have your running back for passing situations, your running back for running situations, blocking situations, and then you can switch it up, you know, to full people. Like, oh, you brought in your pass. You're passing running back. Oh, but you're gonna run the ball, or vice versa, right? Because every, like I said, running back by committee is is usually what you see most people do. You know, they don't usually just have one guy all the time, unless he's amazing. And even then, he's a running back, right? Like people are talking about how is Dallas gonna be able to re-sign Ezekiel Elliott, and everybody's like, oh, they have to. But in in, in honesty, a lot of good, a lot of people are saying, you know, from what I've heard, that like. The Cowboys aren't going to be able to afford to sign somebody, and he is just a running back. Like that's the argument, and they've already proven with that offensive line that anybody can run behind them. So, do you spend tons and tons of money on a running back who is who is really good? Like, yeah, he's good. Or do you spend a lot of money to shore up your offensive line, your your your, your quarterback, you know, um, things like that? Because you can already prove that you can get anybody to run behind you. You know, I mean, shit, they make McFadden look like he was good. And a few other people don't have had that backfield while Elliott was out with injury or suspension or whatever it was. So I don't think running back is is, is the feature that, that it was before, you know, unless you're talking about, like, guys, like, who are the only focal point in their offense, which is, like, you have Saquon Barkley, who's under that, who's, you know, really good. You know, Fournette, who was battling injury last year, who's really good. Um... You know, you have Gurley, 
really good, but, but great surrounding around him. Like, you know what I mean? Like, running back is important, but it's not like it used to be, you know? Like, um, the, the league has moved more towards a passing first type thing. So I, I don't, when I, when I think about people trying to save money, I think they're going to save it at the running back position because it's not what it used to be. You don't need, you don't need to have the most dominant runner in the league to be successful. I mean, the Patriots are, are probably one of the most successful organizations in, in, in our lifetime. And uh, they've never had, until like the last few couple of years, a huge focal point on the running game. And even then, it wasn't like one guy is the main focal point. They had a committee of running backs. So you're going to spend the money on the positions that mean the most, which is quarterback and the line. You know, that's, that's where the money has to get spent. Offensive, defensive line, and of course the quarterback. And the Cowboys still got to side fucking Cooper's greedy ass who thinks he's like one of the best receivers in the league when really he's just, anyway, I'm not going to go into it because he's an ex-Raider and like, you know, he, some, the way he acted after he left the Raiders is just like, you know, bro, you're, you're ridiculous. You had more drops than almost anybody in the league. And, and it's just, you want to talk about, uh, I, I, don't, I don't even want to get into it because like I said, Cooper is just, and of course he had the same agent as Mac. Who both want to be paid ridiculous amounts of money, and are both going to end up, you know, Max Max contract is is, is going to screw over the the Bears. It is they, they overachieved last year, making the playoffs. Of course, you know, because you know our draft picks depended on what they did last season, so they overachieved by far. But Trubisky is not going to be under a, a, a rookie contract very much longer, you know. And then they still have to figure out what they're going to do. You know, with their offense, because like, can you tell me who the Bears starting running back is? No. Okay. Can you tell me any of their wide receivers' names? No. Okay. Well, that's kind of that's kind of where the Bears are at. They overachieved last year. I mean, luckily for them, uh, Minnesota was just terrible with with Kirk Cousins. Green Bay was just terrible. With, with, with whatever was going on with Aaron Rodgers and McCarthy and that whole team, I don't know. And then, uh, who's the other team? That, why can't I think of the other team in their division? Minnesota, Green Bay, the Bears. Oh my goodness. I can't think of a four team. Well, whatever. It'll come to me like after I get done. But yeah, I mean, all, all, all the teams in that division were pretty bad last year, and then the Bears took advantage of that. Um, so we'll, we'll see. Um, it's it's one of those things where we're like, you know, I, I think Gruden and them have done a lot of a lot of good moves. I, I think that they drafted some people in, in questionable positions. We'll see if they work out. Like I'm still waiting to see how Colton Miller is going to work out. You know, uh, you know, supposedly he came in looking really huge, put on a lot of more body weight uh, as far as muscle and stuff. Um, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. Um, we have to stay optimistic as fans. You know, it's been a long time since the Raiders have been pretty decent. You know, I mean, uh, we had one season a few seasons ago where we went 12 and four. But I think that's the the whole just getting, you know, some of it's luck, some of it's uh, catching people off guard because since that season, you know, we have not gone back to looking at anything decent, you know. And, you know, we'll see. Gruden's got a good mind on his head or a good mind in general for football, you know, and he's, and he's building his team like the way he wants it. And I, and, I, and it's going to break or break Derek Carr this, I think, the next year, uh, this this year coming up is, is like if Derek Carr doesn't perform like you know like we need him to perform, don't be surprised if Gruden starts looking for another quarterback. I, I because you know I, I just we we can make excuses for for Derek Carr for a long time because he has had a lot of different offensive systems, but now this is his second year under Gruden's system. You know uh, he's got he's got to show progression. Um, and, and his stats weren't terrible last year, but our office was not very good last year. 
it just it just wasn't like there was there was games where we were not able to to score or even touch the end zone half as much as we should have um, and we'll we'll see we'll see how that goes you know um, but yeah anyways that's it for today just a little bit of short talk nothing too huge uh, got off my chest when I need to get off all right you people be good peace